So I know a lot of you are running at the moment as your daily exercise. So these are, um, will give you like some good stretches that you can do before or after your run as well, hopefully. And also just tell you what you're stretching and what you need to stretch when you're running. Um, so that being said, if you do have any injuries, if you're not feeling well, if anything hurts, just be very mindful of your body. Um, no one knows your body like you. So if something doesn't feel right, that means it's not. Just take a step back pull yourself out, have a drink of water, take a rest, your child's pose, rejoin us whenever you want. Um, do as much or as little of the flow as you like. No one is forcing you to, to do all of it. You absolutely don't have to. It's your time, it's your class. Um, just, yeah, just do as much as you would like. Um, anyone that is joining me that is pregnant, you're very, very welcome. Um, just please make sure that you've got a cushion handy. Just pop underneath your head and your shoulders if we're doing anything lying on our backs. No twists through the spine because it restricts airflow to the fetus. And making sure that you don't pass the first trimester, um, do anything lying on your bellies. So I think that's everything. Let's bring ourselves on to our mats. Sitting cross-legged to begin with. Bring your palms onto your knees. And just give yourself a little wiggle around. You can draw circles with your chest if you want to. Excuse me. You can draw circles with your chest if you want to. Just really start to get into your body. So when I come down onto the mat, I usually have a little bit of excess energy that I need to get out before I bring myself into the space. So feel free to just give yourself a wiggle. Maybe you want to move those shoulders. Maybe you want to do those circles with your body, with your chest. Get into that spine. You can lift those hips. It's the only time I'm going to say it's okay to lift those hips off the mat and um, make sure that you've got enough space around you to do the class so you're not crashing into walls or windows and when you feel like you've got your space you've worked out that little bit of energy bring yourself into a nice seated position cross-legged palms facing upwards on your knees drop those shoulders down sit up nice and tall and close your eyes and let's take a nice deep inhale through the nose Expand your abdomen and send all of your air down towards the bottom of your lungs. Filling them like a glass all the way to the top. And as you exhale, reverse the breath and draw the navel in towards the spine. Start to slow down, slowing everything down. Tune into your breath. Just tune into what your body needs today. And as you inhale, feel that breath washing through you. Exhale, release, let go of anything that is not serving you. Focus in on your breath. And what I say when I mean, what does your body need today? Maybe it needs you to go slowly. Maybe it's looking for a deep stretch. Maybe you just want movement. Maybe you just want breath. So just focus in on what you think your body wants today. Inhale. And exhale. With every breath, try and breathe a little deeper, always teaching your body to use the full capacity of your lungs. Maybe you pause for a second at the top of your breath before you let go and release. And as you inhale, sit up tall and drop those shoulders down your spine. Feel the shoulder blades gliding down towards the earth, gravity pulling them in towards the mat. Sit bones grounded but spine long, so we're light but we're grounded. Shoulders dropping down away from your ears and allowing your neck to grow. So human beings tend to hold on to tension and stress in really subtle ways. So we just check in with those tension points. One is the shoulders. Make sure that they're just dropped down. You're not holding any tension. You're not pulling them upwards. You want to draw them down. And as you do so, lengthen that spine, lengthen the neck. Breathe into that length. Inhale. Exhale. Soften your facial features. Make sure you're not frowning unnecessarily. 
not furrowing your brow. And just start to soften your jaw and just pay attention to the back teeth. Make sure they're not touching, you're not clenching. Drop your tongue down away from the roof of the mouth. Maybe you open your mouth slightly and just stick your tongue out a little bit like a little puppy. It's okay, you're at home, no one can see you do it. If you think it looks silly, I'll do it with you. And as we breathe here, we're just gonna to start to very gently mobilize our body. Start with your head, just draw your chin towards your shoulder, it doesn't matter which one. And gently roll from shoulder to shoulder. Gentle movement to begin with. And if you want to progress that into a full neck roll, then by all means do. I know some people don't like a full neck roll. Remember to go both ways. And then gently bring yourself back to centre. Start to roll those shoulders up to your ears, down your spine, drawing circles with the shoulder blades. You can turn your palms down if you want to. Imagine you've got a pen on your shoulders and you're trying to draw circles, pulling them all the way up to the ears, all the way down the spine, really exaggerate that movement. And then let's take that right hand behind us like a secondary spine, keeping ourselves upright. Take your left hand, the outside of the right knee. Start to gaze over that right shoulder. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, push your knee away and twist. Breathing nice and deeply as you inhale. Lengthen, drop those shoulders down. Exhale, twist through the spine. So only gaze all the way behind you. When we twist, we compress the organs to release toxins. And exhale, gently bring yourself back to centre. When we release the twist, fresh blood flows through the organs. Take your left hand behind you like a secondary spine. Right hand comes to the outside of the left knee. Sit up nice and tall. Inhale. Exhale, push that knee away and twist. Imagining that you're a dirty dishcloth and you're wringing yourself out. And you're waiting for that release of the twist when you can run fresh water through you. Gaze over that shoulder, really feel yourself twisting through the shoulders, through the waist, through the spine. Take one more deep breath, deep into the twist as possible. And gently bring yourself back to centre, inhale, draw your fingers together at the front. Imagine that you're hugging a giant beach ball. Curve the spine into a C shape and drop your chin down onto your chest. Take a deep breath here, inhale. Pull those shoulders apart at the back. Gently start to lift those hands up towards the sky, lengthening through the arms, drop the shoulders down, the neck long. Lovely, and start to hinge across to the left, so we're stretching the right side of the body. Keep those bum cheeks glued down on the mat and the spine nice and aligned. So you want your body to be aligned, you don't want to be kind of twisting or falling forward or backwards. And if you want to, you can take your left hand to your right wrist and just gently pull on that arm. Just get deeper into the stretch. Make sure both bum cheeks stay planted. Inhale, we lengthen, exhale, reach. Really nice. Gently bring yourself back to center, switch hands, right hand to left wrist and pull on the left side. Now, lateral stretch down the left side of the body. Imagine you're trying to add an inch onto that body. Stretching from hip to fingertip and keep those bum cheeks planted. Keep your neck long, your shoulders away from the ears. Inhale. Exhale, one more breath. Gently bring yourself back to center, take those arms wide, give the wrists a little twist, give the fingers a wiggle and start to reach the arms behind you. Interlace the fingers behind your back, open up your heart center and just pull those shoulder blades together like chicken wings at the back. Inhale, really nice. And exhale, release, bring your hands in front of you and take an all fours position. Push down through the palms, the knees and the tops of the feet and try and keep that spine nice and flat, drawing that navel in. Really nice, take a nice deep breath here, inhale. 
and exhale, pushing down into the mat. And if you want to, you can stay here, really allow energy to come out of the palms, the knees and the feet, like you're almost trying to take off and lift up off the mat. And if you want to, you can tuck those toes under and gently hover the knees, still keeping that spine flat, remembering to breathe and engaging in the glutes and the core, pushing back into your heels and hold, breathing. Keep that spine flat, make sure the wrists stay under the shoulders. Push back into the heels. You're only hovering the knees a few centimeters off the mat, about 10 centimeters. Don't let them go any higher. Well done. Five, four, three, two, and one. Release the knees. Drop your navel to the floor, gaze up to the sky, into your cow pose, opening out your heart center. Exhale, arch like a scared cat, drop the crown of the head towards the floor, shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, gazing up towards the sky. And exhale, so we're mobilizing our spine with this movement. And if you're happy here, by all means, carry on. If you want to freestyle your cat cow and really just give yourself a little wiggle, you guys know the deal by now, get into whichever little nook and cranny of your body needs to be waking up. So you can get as weird as you like here. You're doing your practice at home, so really do whatever you want. Maybe you want to get into your neck, your hips, your spine. Maybe you want to draw figures of eight. Maybe you want to come back into child's pose, reach the arms. Maybe you want to come all the way forward into your cobra. Maybe you want to give yourself a little wrist stretch. Maybe you're working on arm balances at the moment. That's a bit of an acquired taste, but I quite like it. And whichever you're doing, just really remember your breath. The breath will guide you through that movement. Really just let it move you. Inhale. And exhale, really nice, lovely everybody. I quite like this time in the class because on Zoom I can see one of you doing something different. It's really nice. Really nice. Just give me one more deep breath here. Bring yourself back to center, all fours position. We're going to take our gate pose. So take a nice deep breath, take your right foot out behind you, draw it in a straight line. So your leg is straight, your right leg. And then I'm gonna show you from the front what we're gonna do next. So you're gonna take that right leg and you're gonna draw a kind of semi-circle and bring it all the way around so it's in line with your left knee. Place the right foot flat, start to walk the hands back and you're gonna curl up through the spine Bring those arms up in line with your ears into your gate pose. Lovely, start to lean to the, to the right. Bring that right hand down onto your right calf and bring your left arm over the top so it's in line with your left ear. Your body's in a kind of little half moon shape. Push that left hip out and feel that stretch all the way down the left side of the body, inhale. Keep yourself upright though, no, try not to collapse backwards. Deep breath. One more time, reaching with those fingers, really trying to touch the other side of the room, and as you exhale, bring that left arm all the way up and over, and onto the floor, in line with your left knee. Reach your right arm up towards the sky, shoulders stacked on top of each other, hips stacked on top of each other. So keeping your chest open, try not to collapse forward. And if you want to stay here, you can try and gaze up at that extended arm. If you want to take this into a balance, lift the right leg, bring the right arm out in front, straight line from finger to toe. And if you want to take a balance with a shoulder and spine stretch, you're going to bend that right knee, take the right hand behind and kick the right foot into the right hand, giving yourself an arch in the back, stretching the shoulders. Find a drishti, a place to rest your gaze so that you can hold this balance. And wherever you are, breathing deeply, give me five, four, three, two, and one. Drop that leg back down. Bring yourself in to your all fours position. Draw that right knee back in. Just give yourself a little wiggle. And then let's take the other side. Left leg is gonna come out behind you. Point that left toe. 
and then you're going to draw that semicircle with your left foot to bring it in line with your right knee. You might want to look down just to make sure that it's not um, behind or in front of the right knee, that it is actually in line. Start to walk your hands back and roll up through the spine, bringing your arms up in line with your ears, drop those shoulders down, lovely. Make sure that left foot is flat. We're going to bring the left arm down the left leg. Reach that right arm up and over and keep your chest open to the front. Try not to fall inwards. I want you to imagine that your body is in a toaster so it's nice and aligned. Right arm in line with your right ear. Reaching up and over, push that right hip outwards. Nice stretch all the way down the right side of the body. Reach those right fingers over to try and touch the other side of the room. Take one more deep breath, reach, and then gently drop that right hand down in line with your right knee. Bring the left arm up, stack the shoulders on top of each other. What I mean by that is try not to bring the arm kind of in a bizarre position. You want a straight line from wrist to wrist. If you're happy here, gaze up at your extended arm. And if you wanna go a little further, take a balance, lift that left leg, bring the left arm out in front. Straight line from finger to toe. And if you want to go further still, take a spine and shoulder stretch, bend that left knee, bring the left hand behind and kick that left foot into your left hand. Find a place to rest your gaze. Wherever you are in this stretch, remember to breathe. Try not to hold your breath. I see people hold their breaths in uh, balancing poses for some reason. I don't know. I do it as well. And let's take a nice deep breath and go for five, four, three, two and one drop yourself back into your gate pose bring those hands down either side back into your all fours position so we're just going to move slightly so i can see my legs and from here you're just going to drop your bum back onto your heels into a kneeling position so i know that kneeling is not in everyone's practice and that's absolutely fine you can um if if you want to you can miss these ones out, but you do need to be kneeling for these ones. So you're very, very welcome to take a child's pose or take your cat cow again, if kneeling is just not in your practice. We're gonna take our thunderbolt. So you're just gonna tuck those toes under and sit your bum on your heels and you're pushing into your heels. Bring your palms onto your knees, sit up nice and tall. And this is literally it, but we're gonna take a few breaths here. It's quite an intense pose. And if at any point it feels a little bit too much, just drop back down into a kneeling position. You can take a child's pose. Gaze straight ahead, drop the shoulders down, inhale. Feel that intensity in your feet and exhale. And the reason we're doing this is because next we're gonna do our toes pose, which is gonna push our feet in the completely opposite direction of this one. Continue your breath. So your toes pose helps prevent plantar fas fas fasciitis, which I always say wrong, which is a disorder of the connective tissue um, in the foot. And basically it results in heel and foot pain. So by stretching the shins and the arches of the feet, which we're gonna do in a second, you can stop that pain. So take a nice deep breath, untuck the feet. So now we're gonna take our toes pose. You're gonna bring your hands behind you, slight bend in the elbow, take a nice deep breath. And when you're ready, you're gonna to start to lift the knees off the mat. And it doesn't matter if you don't lift them very far and you'll feel that stretch through the front of your feet, through your arches, through your shins. We're not gonna hold for long, don't worry. Give me five, four, three, two, and one. Very gently bring yourself back down into your all fours position. And you're just gonna shuffle yourself to the backs of your mats. Drop your chest down onto the mat and reach your arms down in front, take your extended puppy pose. So chest down, feet parallel behind you. So this is a good one for hamstrings and shoulders. Giving yourself a nice stretch through the abdomen and the chest. Maybe you wanna come up on your fingers which will get even deeper into your shoulders. Gaze straight ahead, hips up, take a nice deep breath. Inhale and as you exhale, pull yourself along the mat and bring yourself into your cobra pose. So you're taking your palms flat, shoulders down, neck long, point those toes so that you're engaging the lower half of your body. We don't want to forget about the lower half of that body in this stretch. 
So pointing the toes will lift the knees and engage your hamstrings and your glutes and your lower back. Take a nice deep breath here. And if you want to, you can bring yourself up into a cobra from your sphinx. So sphinx, we're on our forearms like a little statue in Egypt. In cobra, you're going to lift yourself up a little higher. So you're going to get an even deeper bend in the back. Take a nice deep breath here. And as you, if you want to, you can stay here. And if you want to add some movement as you exhale, we're just going to fold ourselves forward towards the left. And inhale, lift so you're hinging at that hip. Really feel that back being stretched and forward. And and forward. Really nice. Try and do a wave in the spine if you can. And lift. And forward. If you want to try and do this with no hands, then by all means, you might not get as high but it teaches spinal strength. And lift, and lower. And once more. And lowering down, lovely. And just push yourself back up into your sphinx pose, so on your forearms. And you're gonna take your right hand out in line with your mat. And just gently roll onto your right side. Bring your right ear to the mat. We're gonna get a deep shoulder stretch now, so if at any point this feels a little bit intense, Bring yourself back to the center and take your sphinx pose, the one where you look like a little statue in Egypt. Balancing on that right hip. Take that left arm and bring it in front of you, coming up on your fingers, right ear to the mat, and you're gonna roll onto that shoulder. So bring that left leg out behind you a little bit. And if you want to, you can bend the left knee, plant the left foot, and just really roll into that shoulder. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Really feel those shoulders opening. Take one more deep breath and gently bring yourself back to center. Take your sphinx pose again. So we're gonna take another little sphinx pose in between each time because it pulls the shoulders out to the side so we're rotating them outwards so we're just countering that stretch. Point your toes, lift the knees, engaging the hamstrings. Take a nice deep breath, inhale. Drop that left arm out to the side of the mat. Drop your left ear to the mat and roll onto your left hip. Bring your right arm up, bending it, bending your arm and coming up on your fingertips and start to roll onto that shoulder. Bringing the right leg back. And if you want to bend the knee, plant the right foot and really roll into that shoulder then by all means. Breathing here, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale one more time. And gently bring yourself back to center. Into your cobra pose. Take a nice deep breath. Push down through your palms and you're just going to bring yourself into your upward facing dog, which is really good for your posture. Make sure the tops of the feet are down on the mat. Lifting those thighs, wrists under shoulders, neck nice and long. Take an inhale. Exhale, tuck the toes under. Push up into your downward dog. And if you want to, if it's your first downward dog of the day, you can bend the knees. Feel free to just walk those feet out here, loosening up. So if you get tight hamstrings and calves like I do as well, just give them a little walk out here. And then just pushing down through your palms. So what you want in your down dog, pushing into the outside of your little finger, pushing down through your palms, maybe slightly softening the elbow, draw the navel in towards the spine. Make sure there's a straight line all the way from your tailbone down to your hands. Your head should be looking at between your legs. Your feet should be hip width apart. You're trying to draw the heels down towards the mat, but if they don't meet the mat, do not worry. And you want, you can have either bent legs or straight legs. And like I always say, I tend to keep bent legs in down dog just because it's easier to keep the spine straight with bent legs and it just puts less pressure. So if you've had hamstring injuries as well, you'll see that it's probably a little bit better to have slightly bent knees. So we're going to take a little stretch here to just loosen up the backs of our legs, our calves and our hamstrings, obviously very important for running. Inhale, come up on your toes, lift the heels. Exhale, lower the balls, lower the heels. Inhale, up on the balls of the feet. Exhale, lower, feel that pull in the back of the legs, the calves, the hamstrings. We're just starting to loosen them up. Really good one to do before you're running. Also after lifting. And lower and keep that navel drawn in towards the spine. Inhale. Lift. Exhale, lower. And give me two more of those. Lift. 
Feel that pull. And lower. And lift. Well done. And lower. Inhale. Bring yourself forward into a high plank, engaging that core. Bum tucked in, body in a nice straight line. Make sure those wrists are underneath your shoulders. Deep breath here. And we're going to start to drop the knees down towards the mat, just hovering them, and then push the hips back and up into your downward facing dog. Inhale again, high plank, drop the knees, push the bum back towards the heel, downward facing dog. So you're going to do a few of those little circles. Inhale, we drop forward, high plank, knees, bum, downward dog. And again, plank, knees, bum, downward dog. Give me one more, plank, knees, Bum, downward dog. And just hold your downward dog here. So we're stretching our hamstrings and our calves and our foot arches. And we're also strengthening our shoulders. Take a nice deep breath. And you're going to take that right leg all the way up behind you into your three-legged dog. Pass the right knee forward towards your chest, planting the right foot, and come into a low lunge, also known as your runner's lunge. So you want to make sure that right ankle is underneath the right knee. So our low lunge is stretching our hip flexors and strengthening our hamstrings and our quads. So all very important things for when we're running. So take a nice deep breath here, inhale. And if you want to, you can bring those arms up in line with your ears, drop the shoulders down. And if you want to go a little further and take a little twist, you're going to split the arms, left arm's going to come forward, right arm's going to go back. And you're very welcome as well to bring that right hand back towards your left calf and reach back with the left arm. So we're really, really, this is just a little bit on top, don't worry about this bit, what we're really aiming for is the stretching of our hip flexors and the hamstrings and just getting into that area, take a nice deep breath, bring both hands back down on either side of the front foot, straight that front leg, flex the right foot and bending the back knee, getting a nice deep hamstring stretch here. Inhale, this is a really juicy hamstring stretch. Exhale, start to draw yourself forward, bringing your torso towards the thigh. What we want to avoid here is hunchback of Notre Dame, really, really curvy back. So try and keep the spine flat as you can. It doesn't matter if you don't get down as far into the stretch. What you'll notice is when your spine is flat, you actually get a much deeper stretch anyway, because you're probably hinging from the hips. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Bring yourself back into your low lunge. And if you want to, you can stay here. If you want to take a little twist with me, you're going to take that left hand to the outside of your mat. So we're taking the mat out of the equation. Bring your right arm out in front. And just circle that right arm back so you're gazing behind you and your right hand is reaching backwards. If you want to, you can lift that back foot and take your left foot into your hand and just take your little monkey twist. Really nice. Sink into that hip, whichever version you're doing, we're really getting deep into the hamstrings, getting into our hip flexors. Take one more deep breath. And if you're holding your foot, drop that back foot, both hands on either side of that front foot and straight that front foot again, flex that right foot. Really nice inhale and stretching that hamstring, start to walk the hands forward with every breath. And take one more deep breath, plant that right foot. You're going to walk your hands around to the center and bring yourself up into a wide leg forward fold, which is really lovely because we're extending the spine and stretching those hamstrings. Really good for a hamstring stretch. Start to pull the crown of the head down towards the mat. Deep breath in here. And exhale. So lengthening our spine, this one's really, really good for lower back pain. I'm feeling that nice stretch through your hamstring. Pulling the crown of the head down towards the floor, hinging at your hips. Gently walk your hands up towards the front of your mat and straighten your spine. Take your right hand in the center between your legs 
and lift that left arm up towards the sky, gazing up at your left arm, your extended arm in your star pose. So your arms are in a nice straight line between your legs in the center. So you kind of look like the Deathly Hallows if you read Harry Potter. And breathe here, deep inhale, feel that chest opening up to the left. Lovely, well done. Still feeling that pull on the back of the hamstrings. Take a nice deep breath, drop that hand, walk your hands around to the center, bring both hands on either side of that front foot, take a nice deep breath, placing the palms flat, and you're going to lift up into your standing split, so you're bringing that left leg out behind you. So standing split is probably not actually going to look like a split unless you're super, super flexible. But what we want to aim for is our hip alignment, so try not to open up to the side, you're just bringing that leg out behind you. Take a nice deep breath. We're going to start to bend the left knee, bend the right, drop that knee towards the ankle and straighten. So we're dropping in and straighten. Well done. This is really good for strengthening your legs and drop in and straighten. Well done. Give me one more there and straighten and just bring both feet down onto the mat, soften the knees and take your Uttanasana forward fold. Just take hold of your elbows and very gently sway from side to side. Start to bring your hands down onto the mat and just tuck your hands underneath the feet. So if you need to bend your knees quite a lot, do not worry. It's better to have bent knees and a nice straight spine, so doing your torso onto your thighs, than have straight legs, put extra pressure on your hamstrings and have a really curved back. So soften those knees, bring the hands underneath the toes. So your Uttanasana, with hands under feet, which is stretching your hamstrings, your hips, and your back. If you do feel like you want to start to straighten your legs and you can keep that spine fat, then by all means do. Take a deep breath, inhale. And exhale, really good one, this one to do before and after you're running. With every breath, try and draw yourself deeper into that stretch. And then take a nice deep breath, release the hands, take your left hand into the center of your feet, start to bend the left leg, straight the right leg and bring that right arm up towards the sky, opening the chest to the right foot. Take an inhale here, exhale, drop that right hand down, straight the, bend the right knee, straight the left leg, right hand in between the feet, left arm up, opening that chest to the left side, inhale. Exhale, drop the left hand and again, bending the left knee, straight the right leg, reach that right arm up, opening the chest. And drop that right hand down between the feet, bend the right knee, straight the left leg, reach that left arm up, inhale, chest open to the left hand side, last time, put deep breath. Both hands back down, take a nice deep breath, place your palms flat on the mat and instead float or jump back into a plank position. So, plank position. Options here, you can either push up into your downward facing dog or you can take a vinyasa with me. Tuck your elbows in and come down through your chaturanga. Push forward, upward facing dog. And push back. Downward facing, really nice. Take a breath, send that left leg all the way up behind you into your three-legged dog. And draw that left knee in towards the chest. Planting the left foot, taking a low lunge. A runner's lunge on the left hand side. So remembering this is the runner's lunge for a reason because we're stretching our hip flexors and strengthening our hamstrings and quads. So bring your arms up in line with your ears, open the shoulders down, hips square to the front, make sure that knee is above the ankle. You're not sending the knee forward. So if you're happy here, lovely. If you want to take a twist, split the arms, right arm forward, left arm back. And if you want to, you can bring that left arm all the way back. And reach with that right arm. And breathe in here. And exhale. Inhale, we'll mill those hands down on either side of that front foot. Straightening that front leg, bend the back leg. Flexing that left foot. Hamstring stretch. Make sure those hips are squared to the front. Inhale, keep that spine flat. Exhale, start to feel yourself forward, walking your hands forward, torso to the thigh. Nice, juicy and intense hamstring stretch, this one. I do like a hamstring stretch. Deep breath, inhale. Pulling yourself deeper with every breath. Exhale. One more time. 
and dropping that left foot back down. If you're happy here, lovely, and if you'd like to take a little monkey twist with me, right hand is going to come to the outside of the mat, take the mat out of the equation. Left arm, so bent knee arm, out in front. Circle that arm back, gazing behind you, and if you want to, you can lift up that back foot. Kick the, left, the right foot into the left hand, and twist. Really, really nice, well done. And breathe here, give me five, four, three, wherever you are, two, and one if you're holding your foot, drop that foot. Hands down on either side, one more hamstring stretch, straight that leg, flex the foot in here. And exhale. And inhale. Bring yourself as deep as you can, feeling that pull on the back of the left hamstring. Exhale, give me one more. Gently start to walk your hands round to the centre and lift up into a wide leg, forward fold. Starting to glue the crown of the head towards the floor, hinge at the hip, lengthening the spine, feeling the pull on the back of the hamstrings in here. And exhale. One more breath. Flatten your back, gaze straight ahead. Take your left hand to the center in between your legs, right arm up, opening your chest to the right hand side. Make sure it's a straight line from your left hand all the way up, gazing up at your extended arm, opening your chest to the right, making sure that you're all angular so it's a straight lines everywhere, straight line from wrist to wrist, and straight line both legs, and breathe in here, and exhale. And inhale. And exhale, drop that hand, walk the hands round to either side of that front foot. Take a little bend in that front knee and push up into your standing split. So on your left leg now, right leg out behind. And let's take a nice deep breath here. Start to drop the knee towards the ankle, bending both legs and lift. And give me five and lift. Four, lift the other leg last time and lift, three, and lift, two, and lift, and one, and lift, then bring both feet back down, take your utanas in a forward fold, slight bend in the knees, just hug your elbows and gently allow yourself to sway from side to side, to just recenter. maybe you want your arms to hang heavy, heavy and loose like a rag doll, pressing your palms, down on the mat, step, float or jump back into your plank position. And if you want to push straight up into your down dog, by all means, if you want to take a little vinyasa, tuck those elbows in, come down. Push forward, upward facing. Well done. Push back. Downward facing dog, slight bend in the knees. Step, float or jump between the hands. Into a seated position on your mat. Really nice, take your feet in front, bend the knees. Lovely, we're gonna take our boat pose, everyone's favorite. Really good for your abs. So your options are, you're either gonna bring your hands behind you and take your feet out in a tabletop position, remember to keep that spine flat and your core engaged. Wanna go a little further, arms out in line. So we're balancing on our bottoms. And if you want to go further still, you're going to straight those legs and balance. Keep that back flat. So you're in a total V shape. And hold here. Well done. Keep that core engaged back flat. Give me five, four, three, two, and one. Very slowly, you're going to start to bring yourself down, flatten your back, but keep the feet raised, the shoulders raised, and the head off the floor. So your spine is flat. Feet lifted, gaze at your toes, trying to reach with your fingers, give me five, four, it should be really nice and engaged in the core, three, two, and one, let go, bring the arms out on either side, and breathe. Really nice. So we're gonna take our reclined cow face, which is really good for increasing range of motion in the hips. So just bringing your knees up 
and you're gonna cross your legs. So let's bring our right leg in front first and bring the feet out to the side. And I want you to grab hold of your feet with the opposite hand. And you're trying to pull the feet towards you, but also apart. So pulling them away from each other, but also towards you. And start to pull them in, inhale. You can also feel that's quite a nice massage on your spine. And you'll feel that stretch through your hips. So this is a really, really good one to also to do before and after you run. So you want nice hip mobility if we're running. Breathe, inhale. And exhale. Always pulling those legs a little bit further towards you. Lovely. Take one more deep breath here. And then gently bring those knees back to center. And this time take the left knee in front. So we're crossing the other way. Taking hold of the feet with the opposite hand. And starting to pull those legs towards you. So you'll feel it probably in the left hip now. And so we're pulling the feet apart and towards us at the same time. I really like this one, but I think it's probably an acquired taste. If you do feel very uncomfortable, feel free to just take your knees into your chest and give yourself a little up and asana. Really nice. Give me five, four, three, two, and one. Gently take those knees in towards your chest. And then just bring those legs into a tabletop position. Take your arms out on either side. I'm just going to take a twist. Another really good one to do before or after you run. Drop those knees over to the left and gaze to the right. So always gazing in the opposite direction of your legs. And breathe, feel that twist from the base of the spine all the way up. And then bring those knees back to centre and drop them all the way over to the right. Gaze to the left. Really nice. And once more on both sides, dropping the knees to the left, gaze to the right. If you feel, if you hear a click in the spine, I find it very satisfying. And once more. Gently bring yourself back to center. Let's finish up with a shoulder bridge. It's always a nice one to finish on just because it gets into the glutes and the hamstrings. It's really good for pelvic floor, it's good for core, and it's also good for reducing stress and anxiety. So I like to finish on it because I find it quite a calming pose. Bring your arms down on either side of your hips. Spine flat, so when your spine's flat, your pelvis might be a very, very gentle tilt, which only you can really see or feel. Feet flat, heels drawn in towards your bum, knees bent, and feet and knees are parallel like train tracks, hip width apart. And we keep them parallel, try not to bow them out because then you'll lose that engagement. So take a nice deep breath, and as you exhale, imagine someone's got a string pulling you up towards the sky. Walk those shoulders together, interlace the fingers, lift the hips nice and high. Keep that engagement. And breathe in, ladies, especially if you've had a baby, really, really nice one for Kegels and pelvic floor exercise. Always engage on your exhale. Inhale, release. Draw that pelvic floor in, well done. Keep those hips nice and high, inhale. Inhale, last time. Hips as high as you can go. Gently start to roll down through the spine. One vertebra at a time. Peel yourself back down onto the mat and just take those knees into your chest and gently rock from side to side to just release any tension in the spine. Maybe windscreen wipe the legs. You can take your toes down and just windscreen wipe it with the knees. And when you're ready, start to straighten out, point your toes, bring your arms above your head, point your fingers, reaching from one side of the room to the other. 
imagine someone's got you by the fingers, someone's got you by the toes, you can't get away. You're almost being pulled. And as you're being pulled, I want you to put tension into every single part of your body, including your face. Screw that face up, make the ugliest face you've ever made in your life. Tiny beady eyes, a million double chins, pull those shoulders up towards your ears. Everything I've told you not to do, do it now. Imagine that whoever's got you by the fingers and toes is not going to let you go until they've added extra inches onto your body. So tension everywhere. You should be shaking from the tension from this stretch. And on top of that, let's throw all of our mental tension in as well. We're going to create a big old tension bob. We're going to build it all up. We're going to let it go. Release it all out into the world so it's not building up inside. Let's keep stretching. Reach, 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 reach. Give me five, four, everything that's pissing you off, four in, three. And one, let go. Bring your arms down by your side. Palms facing up to the sky. Feet falling open. Deep breath in here. And exhale. So now is the chance to get any blankets or cushions, jumpers, socks, drinks of water, dim the lights, pop some music on, whatever you want to do for your Shavasana. I fully recommend taking Shavasana lying down, but if you would like to take it in another position, that is entirely up to you. Also, if you don't want to take Shavasana and you would rather log off now, I absolutely will not be offended. Um, it's not for everyone, I know that. Um, it is quite a nice little treat though to just have those moments to just completely relax and just be free of everything. So when you're ready, just bring yourself down onto the mat, palms facing upwards towards the sky, and feet falling open, closing your eyes, and just bring yourself back to where you were at the beginning of the class. Allowing all thoughts and worries to evaporate. Take an imaginary broom and start to sweep the mind clear of any clutter, any wandering thoughts or worries that just don't serve you in this moment. Breathe into your body and allow that breath to cleanse you from the inside out. Let's just check in with those tension points. Shoulders down away from the ears. Allowing your neck to grow long. Facial features soft and gentle, no frowning, no tension. Jaw unlocked, teeth unclenched and tongue away from the roof of the mouth. Just take your attention to your feet, allow them to fall open on the mat, each toe unraveling one by one. Ankles, calves, knees and thighs lightweight on the mat. All the way up to the base of the spine. Feeling each vertebrae unravel one by one, melting down into the mat as though you're becoming one with the earth. Feel your spine sinking down all the way up to your shoulders and feeling them draw down your spine away from the ears, melting down into the mat. Melting down like lava. Shoulders away from the ears so your neck grows long. Arms falling open at your side, fingertips unraveled, palms open. Imagining someone has just taken the batteries out of you. Head light and facial features soft and gentle. And finally take your attention to your chest and your abdomen. Focusing in on that slow and steady rise and fall of your breath. Allowing that breath to guide your body and your mind into a nice, deep sense of calm. Allowing you to become completely lightweight on your mat. And as you lie here, 
Feel yourself almost lifting up from the mat, becoming so light that you can drift away. No thoughts, no worries, only your breath as you inhale and exhale. And start to wiggle your fingers and toes to draw awareness back into your body. Hug your knees in towards your chest and gently rock from side to side to release the spine. And bring yourself all the way over into a fetal position. And in your own time, gently bring yourself up to seated on your mats. Palms on your knees. Sit nice and tall. And take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, let out a nice deep sigh. <sighs> Just feel your body relaxing as you do that. Let's do it again, inhale. And once more, biggest side, let everything out. Inhale. Ah, draw your palms together at your heart center. Thank you all so much for practicing with me this evening. It has, as always, been a complete delight. Stay happy, healthy, and safe. Namaste. There is a class tomorrow morning as well, 10.15. Um, it, is only on Zoom, it's not on Facebook, but you can sign up on the Our Parks website, it's free. Um, we'll do a dynamic vinyasa flow. And then tomorrow evening, which is the Zoom and Facebook stream, same time as tonight, we're gonna do restorative Sunday evening restorative yoga. Last week I did it the other way around because my son was awake all night, but hopefully he won't be tonight, fingers crossed, so we can actually do it the right way around. Um, if you guys have any suggestions of things you want to practice next week, feel free to just pop me a comment on Zoom or on Facebook and we will go over them um, as, um, as and when I see them.